Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today's video is one that I am actually really excited for. It's one I mentioned quite a while ago and I have been working on it slowly ever since. This is the Steven Universe redesign video and I'll be honest, I'm actually going to turn this into a series because obviously I cannot redesign every character in this show in one video. Am I going to redesign every character? Probably not, but I'm going to do as many as, many as I am interested in in doing. <laughs> Steven Universe needs no introduction, it was a very popular cartoon show and I think it started around 2015. This show has a very special place in my heart but boy it has a lot of problems. <laughs> but there are a lot of um, reviews and critiques out there that are already a lot better than this one so I'm not going to go too much into these unhinged ramblings that I made at like 3am. So like the previous redesign video I am going to be doing a sort of I'm going to redesign the characters and then I'm also going to rewrite some story elements because again it is just something that I really enjoy doing and again from before a disclaimer this is not to say that I am better or I'm trying to make these better or fixing the, the, the designs in any way this is purely a video for entertainment for fun and to probably learn a couple of things along the way because the really enjoyable thing about doing redesigns is taking the essence of the character and just putting my own spin on them. This time I've tried to keep the designs a bit more animation friendly because I think that's where I failed on the other video. So again just keep in mind this is purely for fun and to learn something about character design while I do it. This is one of my favourite cartoon shows. I don't, you know, I love crystals and rocks in real life. So when I found out that it was going to be a cartoon about crystal gems and rocks and all the shiny and glitters, I went out of my mind because I love that kind of thing. I had books about what crystals meant, you know, what they represent, the symbolism. And for the longest time, I did love it without thinking critically about it. <laughs> Something that annoyed a lot of fans is there's a lot of filler episodes and um, people will argue that they're not filler but they are because it's only Steven messing around with the residents of Beach City, not the gems. We have whole episodes where gems aren't even mentioned or their influence on Earth because they had such a massive influence on this world. Why don't the gems interact with people? You know, Rose Quartz, the whole point of her sacrificing her previous life was for humanity. And then you get Pearl saying that humans lead short insignificant lives you know she annoyed me because why would you say that about something that you literally sacrificed your whole world and home for so that always rubbed me the wrong way is that we never see the gems interacting with beach city residents apart from a few episodes which are, are quite enjoyable when they do interact with the citizens but other than that no it's just steven doing something completely unrelated to the plot and the worst thing is this will be in between serious episodes the one that annoys me the most is um Stephen's birthday where they have a birthday party for him right when the earth could be destroyed at any minute by a cluster of broken shards of previous crystal gems who have been combined in some horrific experiment and yet we have a birthday party <laughs> as i said i'm not gonna get too much into this but um, I kind of wish we had had it a bit more condensed. Had a couple of, have those first episodes introducing the world, the characters, have the gems interact more with humans. Something I would have loved. Pearl should have gone on that date with the mystery girl. She should have. That could have been such a good episode because Pearl would have maybe seen the charm that Rose did in humans. And something else, uh, the style. I know people go on about CalArt style, there's no such thing as CalArt style. Uh, that is something really stupid. There's no such thing as bean mouth. What it is, there are trends in animation that the producers see are popular, so they want to recreate something that is popular. You know, I did not like the rounded art style. I love the pilot very much. So something I have done in my artwork 
that I do anyway is I've made them much more angular and sharper so I thought it'd be cool to reflect that in their designs that they are very sharp and angular because they are rocks <laughs> So starting off, we are redesigning Pearl first. Pearl is definitely one of my favourite characters, I love her a lot, but something I really wanted to do was amp up the Cosmic Night theme. I kind of tried to give each character their own distinct aesthetic and theme, and with Pearl I added the bits of gold in her outfit because I feel like pearls in real life, they're usually associated with decoration, decadence, and are usually paired with gold accents or trims or accessories, so that's what I wanted to portray in her outfit. I give her the little star, um, it's not a necklace, it's kind of what clips to a shirt collar, I think. So I gave her a jumpsuit that kind of has a space look while also being kind of fantasy too. I feel like Pearl kind of falls into this aesthetic of being space but make it fantasy. I also took a lot of inspiration from her original design. I always loved the pilot. I always loved the colour palette of the original pilot. I found that the colours were rich and deep while also being slightly desaturated which gave it a very moody tone and I absolutely loved that. I do wish they had stuck with a more moody desaturated colour palette. In the final series we did get some absolutely gorgeous backgrounds and colour palettes anyway so not everything was lost. Again something else I was trying to do is not stray too far from the original concept. I want to see I wanted these designs to be something that could maybe stand on their own but you can tell where they came from so you can tell this is still Pearl even though it is a very different look for her. Something as well I really enjoyed doing is I gave most of the gems multicoloured hair to kind of represent that they have many many colours uh, like real gems in real life when you look at it you will get different shades and tones and even different colours so I tried to represent that in their hair and I do really like the effect a lot and while I'm not going to do like the rewrite like I did in my high guardian spice video I do want to touch on a little thing about their powers um because in Steven Universe their powers are all over the place so in my version I'm gonna really nerf them down because I think it's more fun when characters really have to struggle and find creative ways to be to overcome obstacles. So with Pearl, I imagine the only things that she has going for her are her sword fighting skills and her holograms. So with the holograms, the holograms could be an OP skill all on its own because they are physical. When they manifest, they are able to lift things up. They are able to move on their own. So I actually have this really cool idea that Pearl would be able to make hologram platforms that she could use to propel herself against her enemies. I thought it would be a really cool idea. And again, because we lost track of their powers in the show, there's like a scene where Peridot is flying away and Pearl can shoot lasers from her spear and she doesn't use it. Why? <laughs> so I just thought if you nerf them down, it's easier to keep a track of what they can do and you can have more creative fight scenes because I did feel the fight scenes were kind of lacking in the actual show. Again, loved her character. I found her story arc really interesting, but um, yeah, just like the, the losing track of what they can do and what their abilities. So I thought it'd be really fun to nerf her down. And again, because of that, that would make her story even more powerful because if she only has those two skills, then going up against gems that are much stronger and bigger than her enemies is even more um, inspiring. So that's the idea that I had for her. Obviously, I had to keep her nose. I love Pearl's nose. We need more characters with aquiline noses and pointed noses. It's really cute. So I definitely kept that in the design too. Oh yeah, and something else you might have seen is the pointed ears. I actually have um, an idea behind that too. So 
So the idea is that the ears are actually translators and because I just think pointed ears are cute and I really like pearl with pointed ears, it is cute, but they are actually translators because they are an inorganic species, they are literally made of um, holograms and light, I had the idea that maybe they are unable to hear certain species without it because they speak in musical notes and vibrations of light, that was my idea, and the translators act as actual ears. That was another thing, I really nerfed down their shape-shifting abilities. I imagine that Pearl has the weakest shape-shifting abilities out of all of the gems, and Amethyst has the strongest, but again, I'll talk about that when I get to Amethyst. Pretty, I will be mentioning spoilers in this video, but yeah, so if Pearl has the weakest shape-shifting abilities, that definitely changes some things further down the line in the story, but we'll get to that problem when we get to that problem. I just like the idea that the the higher you go up in the gem hierarchy, the more powerful the gems becomes. So again, the idea behind the translators is that Rose was given the first pair of translators. They were experimental technology because the gems need tech to enhance their beings, if that makes sense. Gem Rose was given the first pair of translators, heard that humans could actually talk and were capable of speech and reasoning and all that. And and that's why she started the rebellion because she realized that all these planets they were destroying with life actually had sentient beings and even if they weren't sentient it was still wrong to be destroying all these planets and sapping them of their resources so yeah will i really re redesign rose probably not because i think her design is actually really good on its own it has a really strong um rose motif and uh i, I like the design overall but maybe we will we'll get to rose i don't know it depends so yeah back to pearl <laughs> so obviously i said i love pearl's character i do think she um it did really annoy me when she said humans leave lead short ex insignificant lives pearl you literally sacrificed everything for these short insignificant lives so i do think she should have gone on the second date with the mystery girl and been put in the position that rose was when rose realized that humans were quite a special creature that they have so much experience and they change so much which is what gems can't do gems are made for a distinct purpose and they fulfill that purpose for the entirety of their existence so yeah obviously with each character i tried to give them each a distinct shape and hopefully when they are just silhouettes you will be able to tell each one from another and i do really like how pearl turned out i love her little boots i also put the little gold rings around her boot i think it's a really cute design and gives it that spacey kind of feel so unfortunately we did lose pearl's original ballerina theme we strayed from the original script <laughs> But um, I think the night theme is a bit better. Hopefully it is coming through that she is more of a warrior, an elegant warrior, because dancing and swords fighting can be both very elegant sports. So I think that still comes across. She still has a very um, elegant pose, a very dance-like pose. So I think that kind of works. And also with her body type too, I did keep the more slim, sleek physique. But I added some very broad shoulders and kind of gave her a slightly androgynous look. I was thinking uh, David Bowie, Tilda Swinton kind of vibe where they, they go for that space aesthetic. I do feel like it suits her. I do like the broad shoulders too. Um, you probably noticed that I do... Uh, on, bo on both Garnet and Pearl's design, I leave a a bit of thigh showing. I feel like it looks good because the skin colours help break up the colours of their outfits. I really like doing that kind of thing. Um, I think there is something in design called a interior silhouette, which is where the colours in the character design are broken up by the skin colour or another neutral colour. So... I like I like the I like the little thigh high boots and the things. I think it looks really nice. <laughs> And obviously the gold trims, I think that really helps break up the design too. And just add that kind of um 
more royal aesthetic. What you would get with pearls in real life. Pearls, again, as I said, are decoration, decadence, and they symbolise irritation, which is kind of interesting. So I tried not to get too much into symbolism because if we did that, we would be here all day. So I did try to just keep myself in check and not go, you know, way, way out there with the design. And with that, I think we've actually come into the end of the first speed paint. So again, I am really happy with the way Pearl looks. If I was cheeky enough, I would take her as my own original character, but I don't think I can get away with it. And on to the next character design, which is Garnet. I really, really love Garnet. She is definitely one of my favourite characters and I really liked her character a lot throughout the show. I do have some... I do have some complaints. <laughs> some little ones. As I always do, it's always fun to complain about my favourite TV show or my favourite cartoon. It's, it, it, it's enjoyable. But um, with Garnet, so if Pearl was the sort of 1920s Art Nouveau cosmic knight, Garnet's theme is a galaxy roller derby girl. And I have seen an illustration that perfectly shows that there is a, a proper aesthetic name for what I'm going for, but I can't remember what it is. Um, but the idea was very 70s disco. Disco Derby, that is kind of what I'm thinking. It's very hard to explain. So with obviously with Garnet, I gave her a much more modern look. She has a bit more of the tech design and the idea that you could look at her and maybe think she's from out of this world. <laughs> Something I was very torn about is um, Garnet's Afro. It is a very iconic design choice to her character and I felt a, it felt wrong to get rid of it but I had this idea to give her a more um, broken up hairstyle so it is technically an afro but it's just been separated out into sections and each section is a slightly different colour so it is like a very deep red, a very dark purple and a slight blue as well and she also has the um, braids on the side which I thought added some nice asymmetry to her design. She obviously has her translators and her visor, they are connected together and hers are a bit more modern looking. So again she's got more of the, she has got the space look but now we're getting into a more modern style. And something else as well with her afro, I wanted to, I got rid of the square shape which I do feel is a bit um, blasphemous. <laughs> But with that, I tried to kind of recreate an actual garnet gemstone. When you look at it, it's very angular, very sharp. And it isn't quite exactly square, but it's sort of uh, got a lot of sharp faces and angles. So I did try to represent that in her hair as well. Uh, same with her jacket. It has the... They're not quite square or circular, but they have a very angular shape to them. And something I wanted to do is really amp up I really wanted to amp up her more playful side because she does have a very playful side and it is really cute when we do see the moments of it. We needed a little bit more. Garnet has a lot of love for Steven and I loved when they showed that in the show. I would have loved to have seen it a bit more. I think Garnet really um, bonded with Steven very early and my theory for that is that it's not quite explained in the show but this is the vibe that I get is that she has a lot of love for Steven is because in a way she he is very similar to her. Garnet is a fusion of two gems Ruby and Sapphire who love each other very much. They were something entirely new something completely different and never seen before but they were a combination brought out of love. Garnet is something born out of love. So maybe I am just reading too deep in this, but Stephen, in a way, is a fusion just like Garnet. 
Stephen is a fusion of Greg and Rose's love, or at least Rose's love of Earth and human life. That's why I think they um, bonded so well and I would have loved to have seen more of them just on their own together. Garnet has so much love for him and something that really annoyed me <laughs> when Stephen prioritised Blue Diamond's feelings over Garnet's. Garnet was the one there for Stephen from the very beginning and yet he goes and helps out the diamonds. I mean, I know he doesn't really, but... <laughs> And Blue Diamond was the gem that was going to shatter Garnet just for existing, so yeah, that felt really bad. So, um, that is uh, my theory about that anyway. <laughs> but yeah, obviously I gave Garnet the jumpsuit with the little star again. I tried to keep this a bit more animation friendly, but I think I did fail. These designs are still quite complicated. I can't really explain Garnet's more mechanical legs. I just thought it looked really cool and I like the bands of white breaking it up. I do feel this has a more playful style. I think it is fun and it does go for the theme that I had in mind for her and I think she did have some of the best one-liners in the show and obviously there is a scene where um she is talking on the phone to Connie's parents and basically saying Stephen and Connie are playing with swords and that, oh no, they're dead, don't call again. <laughs> and I think what was funny about Garnet is that she was obviously panicking. She obviously has a lot of emotions, but she expresses them in a very neutral, deadpan way. And I think they should have um, done a few bit more with that. It was really enjoyable. Oh, and of course I have nerfed Garnet greatly. Um, she, I don't know whether I would give her her gauntlets back, but the idea I have for Garnet is that she actually uses future vision way more to fight actually. So, in her, in the way that she fights, she sees the possibilities of what could happen next and she has to make quick decisions about what future is going to be the one that takes place. So that was the idea that I had. So she can dodge attacks, she can, um, she knows when to attack. It won't always work out because there are so many possibilities in life, but she does rely heavily on her future vision for fights to see the outcomes and what her opponent's next move is. So that is the idea that I had for Garnet. So yeah, her glasses, if I was actually animated this, I would make them completely opaque to give her that more mysterious look. And something I am a little bit annoyed about is that they did reduce Garnet to just fusion and it makes me sad because there was so much more to Garnet. She had a funny she had funny one-liners and she had a great character and she had moments of weakness which we didn't get to see a lot of. I think that was really interesting because Garnet was basically forced to be the leader of the group after Rose passed away. That could have been an interesting storyline where maybe she didn't want to actually be the leader but the other two were acting so immature that she basically felt she had to be the next leader. Spoiler alert, I am going to probably redesign the diamonds, I would really like to, and they are not getting a redemption, definitely not. They don't deserve one. <laughs> And on to Amethyst. With Amethyst design, the aesthetic I was going for was 19, 90s grunge girl, riot girl type of thing. Very punk, very grunge, um, very artsy too. Uh, I really enjoyed doing her ripped shirt. I really like the idea that um, Amethyst is the more artsy one, that she is creative and artistic and that is due to her shape-shifting abilities. I have the idea that that is her only skill, along with her weapon skills, but she is a fantastic shapeshifter. Due to being very condensed, um, I think that's an interesting thing, is that Amethyst was the one who was overcooked, as they say, 
uh, the idea is that because she is so condensed, her form, she's able to manipulate her form much easier than most gems. Uh, I like the idea that Amethyst is the one closest to humans, that she has been greatly inspired by them, and um, especially because we see her hang around other humans like Vidalia who was on the who seems to be very old school punk and I thought that was really interesting that she got her creativity maybe from Vidalia and from hanging around uh, humans who were into art and everything so yeah I like the idea that she's supposed to be a very creative artsy girl who doesn't follow the rules of the other gems she is kind of making her own way and doing her own thing uh, I gave her a ponytail. I There is a scene in the show where she puts the hair up and it looks really cute, so I gave her the ponytail. Again, I gave her the multicoloured hair because I think it, it just looks cool and it also gives that punk vibe as well. She has the um, studded armbands too. And something that was accidental is I accidentally gave her like a Roman or aquiline nose. It was just the way that I was thinking and I was going to delete it. But I really like the way that it looks, so um, I just left it in and I think it looks really good. <laughs> and I don't actually have too much to say about Amethyst. Um, Amethyst is like a parallel of Jasper and I th would have liked to explore their dynamic more in the show. I would have loved to have seen it because they are both from Earth. Amethyst grew up in the prime growing location. Everything was perfect, but she came quote unquote wrong that's how everyone describes her and jasper who came from like one of the worst growing locations came out you know technically perfect and i think it would have really been interesting to maybe explore that dynamic that they could have had in the show i don't know i think it would have been really cool to see but yeah it definitely stuck to amethyst's original color scheme very closely i don't think i actually changed too much about her original colors um i think the purple I think the purple I chose is a little bit lighter or a little bit more vibrant and saturated and gave her more... I always liked how Amethyst was more of a big sister to Stephen rather than being a guardian. I think she encouraged him to think creatively and think out of the box and I think with that artsy theme I was going for that fits her character really well. She had, as I said, she had her own way of doing things and she wasn't really understood by the other two for doing the things that she did. But she had her own methods and I think, again, I would have liked to have seen it, maybe a couple more episodes of just Stephen and Amethyst doing their own thing together. Oh, and another reason I gave her the ponytail is I thought when I finally get around to doing the fusions, because I do plan on doing the fusions, uh, I thought this is where Opal's um, hairstyle could come in, that it's more inspired by Amethyst sides amethyst side rather than pearl side but again i'm gonna save that for the fusion video i'm actually really looking forward to doing that and sadly i don't have too much to say about amethyst because honestly i quite like the design um i'm really pleased with it and i feel like it does still look like amethyst again i'd love to turn her into original character but i'm not gonna be able to get away with it <laughs> i also really like the line art on this particular character design um i think i was getting i'm getting the hang of clip studio paint at long last um i finally found the button where you can actually adjust the speed of your line and the width of your line depending on how fast you are going i found the little icon that brings it all up but i could never find the actual part where you can edit the brush and i only found out how to do that after I'd finished all of these illustrations, which is kind of annoying, but that's just how it is. However, I did take this into Procreate for final touches and some final special effects like chromatic, chromatic aberration, which is one of my favorite effects to add to my art. I probably overuse it way too much, but it's never enough for me. <laughs> But yeah, I take it into Procreate and I also draw the weapons as well. I draw Pearl's spear and I draw Amethyst's uh, whip. I actually add way more um, crystals to the whip 
it's way too many and would be super difficult to animate but it looks cool for this particular illustration so we'll leave it in but yeah i take it into appropriate and i also draw the weapons as well i draw pearl's spear and i draw amethyst uh whip i actually add way more um crystals to the whip it's way too many and would be super difficult to animate but it looks cool for this particular illustration so we'll leave it in i also did the background in procreate as well i had this idea to kind of imitate the clouds that we see in the actual show the backgrounds are really highly stylized so i tried to recreate that in the actual background that i made for the pieces so and again, they're just like basic gradient colours. Nothing that distracts too much away from the character designs, but something that maybe complements them. And finally, we are on to Stephen himself, the main character of this show. The only perspective we ever see from Steven Universe. <laughs> With Stevens, I think it does stray the furthest away from the original concept. My idea was to make him much more, um, much more of a beach boy. He, he is much more tanned. I had the idea because he's out on the beach all day running around, going on adventures. I did have the idea that he would be a lot more tanned. Um, I did give him a more orange peachy undertone to his skin tone and I feel like it complements the other colours really nicely. My idea is that Steven has the colours of the other teammates in his design. So his trousers are kind of like a, a very light green turquoise which represents pearl. His hair is a very dark deep wine red which kind of represents garnet and then the black represents amethyst who again he has a sort of slight punk look to him as well i gave him uh one of his dad's t-shirts instead a mr universe t-shirt because i thought it'd be really cute if he's wearing his dad's merch and um i gave him I was, the funny thing is I was actually really inspired by Salmon Run, the new Splatoon game is coming out and I'm really excited. So I gave him this kind of fisherman's jacket, really bright orange. I have the idea that Steven, in my version, is a lot more prepared for adventures in the world. So he has the pockets on his trousers and jacket too, and he has loads of stuff in them like torches, first aid kits, not that the gems need them, <laughs> snacks, all that kind of thing in his pockets. I also have this idea that Steven is actually looks, actually looks older than he actually is. I have this idea that he is subconsciously shape-shifting himself to look a little bit older, to be taken seriously by the gems. I also gave him pointed ears. <laughs> I think it's really cute. But I had this idea that because Steven is a fusion between inorganic and organic life that he has actually some kind of technical parts kind of they're like organic but technical if that makes sense so with steven he is able to understand other gems and other life forms without a translator so i thought that would be really cool is that uh humans would not be able to understand gems if they talk to them but Stephen is able to converse between human, gem, and any other alien really easily, and I think that lends into his um, peacemaker skills. But with his hair, yeah, I um, gave him the very deep wine red to signify Garnet's colour scheme, but also to signify that he has a little bit of Rose Kilt Quartz's colour scheme in him, but it is a mix between Greg and Rose. I tried to make them, you know, an actual fusion. I did get rid of his flip-flops. I always hated those flip-flops it feels really blasphemous blasphemous to get rid of them but i did i did give him sandals however again they're supposed to be like those super hiker sandals i did even consider giving him those shoes that have the toes cut out because he seems like the kind of boy that would do that he is so prepared for adventure but i decided not to i just gave him some chunky uh hiking sandals 
and the reason that I took away a lot of the pink colour scheme is to kind of make it not so obvious he was Rose Quartz's son. So the colour scheme I kind of withdrew and gave him a more peachy orange kind of colour scheme. I also didn't give him his shield because again I like the idea that Stephen has to rely solely on his own thinking and his own survival skills that's why he has the jacket full of um stuff that is prepared for any situation i like the idea that he is the one with the very creative ideas of how to solve problems and then he slowly slowly opens up his powers along the way very much like how the show did i feel like the show did a good job of um building up to his new abilities and skills and obviously I actually designed Lion as well. I wasn't going to, but I feel like he is an important part of the series and it's always fun to have uh, an animal companion on your journeys. So my idea behind Lion is I just changed his colour scheme slightly, gave him uh, more lion-like patterns, but I also wanted to break down his mane into a very diamond shape which again is kind of harking at things to come um i also gave him the little diamond uh forehead pattern which i thought would be a cool signifier of where the sword eventually comes from so that was my idea behind lion um i was going to draw connie as well i'm not trying to design the humans of beach city to me they don't matter that much but to me Connie is a very important part of the series and again I would have loved to have seen her more in the show just doing just going on adventures with Steven um, one of my favorite favorite episodes is Nightmare Hospital it has such a creepy moody vibe and we really see Connie and Steven working really well together and putting together the things they've learned from their training and everything. Again, I love characters that have to really struggle to overcome obstacles put in their way. And Nightmare Hospital was just such, such a good episode. I absolutely loved that one. So Connie, I think I will design her for the next video, which is going to be the Homeworld Gems. So uh, Lapis, Peridot and Jasper and we will hopefully do Connie in that as well. My idea is definitely to turn this into a series because I'm having a lot of fun with this. I'm not too good at drawing animals so I think I did a pretty good job with drawing lion. I struggle a lot with animals. I do want to draw more in future actually. I'm not interested in doing realistic animals. I am interested in doing like antho and cartoon characters so hopefully it's something I can do in future. And yeah, I kept, I tried to keep lion shapes very, very basic. So funny enough, I think out of all the, all of the designs, lions is probably the most animation friendly. And even then, it's probably pushing it with all the markings. <laughs> And with that, I think we've actually come to the end of this video, this absolute beast of a speed paint. So let's have a look at the finished pictures. enjoyed the video because I had a lot of fun doing this. I have been re-watching Steven Universe, that's kind of what inspired this speed bane and it has just been something I've 
I have fun picking apart my favourite shows for some reason. I love finding out the weird trivia about shows or picking apart the bad pits. It's really fun to do and I hope you'll enjoy what I'm doing here. You know, this isn't mean meant to be mean spirited or anything like that. It's just, we're just here to have a little bit of fun and learn a bit about character design. So I really hope you enjoyed it and just to tell you about my brushes that i sell for procreate i sell brushes all of brush packs from as low as two dollars to up to ten dollars for different things inking sketching bricks and other patterns you would find in a city they are all available on my ko-fi link the link will be in the description and a big thank you to my patreons and you can find me on other places on social media the links will be in description as always and i also have a patreon i've always got to talk about my patreon because you can actually see the upcoming designs for the next video already i have been terrorizing my patreons with so many steven universe sketches that they are probably sick of me by now but and they stick with me i also put up uh, previews of other projects that i am hopefully gonna work on really soon i'm really excited i have a lot planned and speaking of patreon a big thank you to my patreons this month for helping me out and supporting me and indulging me in all the silly things that i like to make i have been really enjoying drawing art again and just doing what i want to do and they have been sticking around and supporting me and it really means the world to me so a big thank you to my patreons I'm actually really happy with the illustrations and I'm so looking forward to the next the next part. I am going to do some of my favourite, favourite characters. I love the crystal gems a lot, but I always like the villains more. <laughs> and with that, I think that is the very end of the video. So again, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, comment if you'd like. And... I will see you all in the next video that I am very excited for. Bye bye!